Hi everybody, here's Christian from Team Warcast. Uh, and welcome to our um, Pico Hero, our um, tutorial on how to make Pico ga 8 games. Um, so today I've been teaching a little bit Pico 8 and so I, I said, I thought to myself like uh, I'm in the mood for more Pico 8 stuff. So I thought I'm going to return to our, um, our, our um, breakout clone that we are working on. And I'm going to do some stuff. Now on the previous episodes of our breakout clone thing, I'm going to load this. On our previous episodes, uh, they were pretty hardcore. We did some hardcore collision detection kind of stuff. And um, and so I thought it would be a good idea to maybe get back to some some a bit of a simpler episodes, get back to the basics, kind of uh, use an episode to catch our breath, and basically do some simple stuff. So how about we do that? How about we do do some stuff that we're already familiar with? Uh, I think it's it's worthwhile every now and then to kind of like catch a catch a catch a break, you know, to kind of um, relax a little bit. So here's something I wanted to show you guys that we didn't do yet. I kind of teased it a little bit, um, but I didn't quite know at the time how this worked. So I, I wanted to use a print to introduce this now. How do we make 60 frames per second? Uh, if you're familiar with video games, <laughs> especially back in the days, back in the, like in two, around 2000, people were very obsessed about 60 frames per second. These days, it kind of goes away slightly. Uh, but yeah, video games usually run at 60 frames per second, especially old video games. Even the Game Boy one, the original Game Boy, ran at 60 frames per second. And But you can also make them run at 30 frames per second and it still kind of looks okay. But some people are very, very, um, very um, sensitive to the frame rate. They really want to see um, games that run at 60 frames per second. It looks more fluid at 60 frames per second. Uh, the reason between 30 and 60 is why why doesn't it go you know like 45 frames a second you know uh, and the reason why it has to be either 30 or 60 is that um video games used to run on tvs and so there is like a refresh of the tv that you have to take in, into account and it doesn't make any sense like it doesn't help you to have a refresh rate of like you know 45 frames per second because the tv is already running at, at 60 frames per second technical stuff. There's probably way better YouTube videos explaining this stuff. But usually, generally, um, you want to have 60 frames per second for a nice fluid game experience. For example, racing games always run at 60 frames per second. Fighting games run at 60 frames per second. Those kind of games where fluid movement is important, you should try to get them at 60 frames per second. And Pico 8 also supports 60 frames per second, absurd, uh, uh, starting with certain versions. I didn't want to go to 60 frames per second because um, I was using... Uh, the pocket chip and it had like an older version flashed on this where it didn't support 60 frames per second and I didn't want to create programs that wouldn't run on this but recently they brought out a um, firmware upgrade and now this also supports 60 frames per second and it's very easy to to make it run at 60 frames per second we're gonna, just gonna instead of update we're gonna, just gonna go update 60 it's a different function instead of update you have update 60 60 um, so Zephyr is saying a lot of games run at 30 frames per second, but interpolate to be to fake 60 frames per second. Yeah, yeah. You, there's there's a lot of new techniques these days. All right. So instead of update 60, you go uh, update you go update 60, and now this function gets called 60 times per uh, second. The draw function has been called 60 times per second already all this time. You haven't realized, but you know since you're not actually moving anything, it would just repeat the 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 frame that was before, so it wouldn't actually look smoother because nothing was moving at this kind of speed. And so now that we update x60 per second, it should run a little bit smoother. It also should run faster. Faster or slower? Let me think about this real quick. It should run faster because we're repeating more, because we're executing this more. Let's, let's try this. Yep, it's run a lot faster. <laughs> So we kind of have to basically um, take all the values, all the speed values that we had, and we have to divide them by two. So instead of ball dx2, we're going to ball dx1. And where we move the pad, 
here we have to deal with this somehow with uh, with this part uh, because now it's it stops too 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 abruptly but some, that's something gonna deal with this uh, in a second here I want to go to 2.5 with the speed ah, that that's better now of course on you guys on the stream you don't see the difference because I'm streaming at 30 frames per second but if you do this I swear it looks different I can see the 60 frames per second with my eyeballs um, okay, but now the pad is a little bit too firm. I want it to a little bit more floaty. Now the problem here is we're using like a divider here, like a multiplicative um, association here. So we cannot actually just take like the half of this. Um, let me see, let's go two point, it's dividing, right? So it, 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 yeah, okay, so let's go let's like 2.3 or something. Let's try this. Ah, that's, that seems fine. It looks nice and firm for sure. Very, very smooth. Okay. So that was an easy fix, uh, an easy way to beef up our, our program. Good. Next thing I want to do is I want to deal, I already talked about this in the last episode. I want to create a loading screen and I want to create a um, um, like a score maybe on the top of the screen that, that shows how much score I have or how many lies I have. I want to have a game over screen as well. This is a bit of a challenge because it basically means that we can have to show different things at different times of the game. Oh, ha, I wrote a, a, a note here. There was an error here. I think uh, one of the signs was was wrong. Let me see. Did I did I write something? Yeah, there was an error here. I think one of the signs was was wrong. Uh, or the W was wrong. I don't know. You kind of have to check this. This is the right way to write uh, to write this. So if you just typed um, the program down that we had last time around, uh, this is uh, please cross check this with this this version. This is this is the correct version. Do this. I think maybe one of the signs was missing or maybe the X's and Y's, maybe the, there was too many Y's, maybe it looked like this or something. Um, p please go through this through this part of the code and make sure it's this, this like this. Right, so we wanna show, we want to show different things depending on what the game is, what kind of state the game is currently at. So I'm gonna go to my draw function and I'm gonna change the draw function. So I'm gonna copy the draw function, copy the entire draw function, copy. I'm gonna paste it in. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a second function that it has the same content that is called draw underscore game. Okay. And then inside my draw function, I'm gonna call that function draw game. So down there is nothing in our draw function except from our draw game, which seems like, okay, why are we doing this encapsulation? Well, now we can do something like this. In our draw function, we can go, go like if mode equals game, then draw game. Else if mode equals start, then draw start. Else if mode equals game over, then draw game over. And this is a pattern that you see in a lot of games where you have a variable. In this case, we have the variable mode and the variable mode controls how the game behaves. And somewhere in a loop, in a game loop, you find an if statement checking for which mode the game is currently in and do something completely different just based on this one variable. Um, there's a bunch of stuff we haven't defined yet. For example, we haven't defined the different functions. I'm going to define them right now. Function draw uh, start. We're we not going to have anything in here, just going to put its CLS in here. And we're gonna go with a function um, game over, draw underscore game over. Again, not doing anything yet, just clearing the screen. Just clearing the screen for now. We're gonna fill this with meaningful stuff in a second. 
And of course, the most important thing is that we don't have any mode variable. We're going to define it over here in the init. I'm going to go mode equals start because the game should start in an, on the start screen, obviously. <clears throat> Right, so now when I start, it's, it's blank. The game is actually playing because uh, the update function is playing in the background. You can hear the game playing. Um, it's just simply you don't see it because we're not drawing the game. So we need a similar, um, similar solution here for the update function as well. We need also the same if statement thing in the, in the update function. And we're going to do this right now. One thing, so one thing I wanted to explain is that this thing that we're doing right now is called a state machine. You sometimes hear this state machine is the term for this, which means there is like a huge if statement somewhere. And depending on that if statement, something completely different happens. I'm going to put it in here. And this will get cleared out. And is this? Yeah, okay. State machine is what we're doing here. Um, right, and so I'm just going to copy the content of... Um, I always press the wrong thing. Uh, of our draw function, I'm going to copy this out and I'm going to put it in here in update 60. Uh, but now it's not going to be a uh, draw game, but update underscore game. And instead of draw game, we're going to call it update game. Update start. And update game over. So now if we took one game, one type of program, and turned it into di three different kinds of programs. Uh, update underscore start function update underscore um, game over. Right. Now when we start, nothing happens. Yay! We made a program that does nothing. Um, Right, so now we can start filling in things. We can start making the different uh, different game modes do different things, actually. So in our start function, we're not going to uh, go wild just yet. We're not going to create some amazing graphics or anything. Just going just gonna to do a print. Mm. Uh, Pico Hero Breakout. Like this. Just gonna write something and then maybe something like um, press. Um, where is the button? Uh, there we go. Press X to start. There we go. Uh, oh, that's not update, by the way. That's something that goes, of course, in the draw function. Uh, draw, draw, start. There we go. There is where we're going to put this in here. So let's run this. And now it's in the top corner, of course. We have to center this. So let's center this. Um, um, we just, I'm just going to go like, I'm going to just try something. 40, 40, uh, and 7 is going to be our, where is my, there's this. There's my cheat sheet again, doing the <laughs> advertisement for the cheat sheet always. Seven is the is white. And then I'm gonna go 40 and 80. And that's gonna be, let's go with the green. That's good. A bit too far to the right. So let's go like with 30, 30. That seems fine. The lower one can be like 32, maybe. Seems more centered now. Easy peasy. Now let's also make it react to the to the to the start. Um, so that's where we go with update start here. 
we're gonna go if and we're gonna use the same functions that we use down here to control the pedal we're gonna just ask if btn um so i'm not sure which one is the x button let's go with four then end and if that happens mode equals game easy as easy as that um it's a good idea to not just set the mode to game but actually have a specific specific function that starts the game start um game uh, because for example when we lose the game when we go to game over it might be nice to be press like x button to continue to restart the game and then we can execute this as well so i'm gonna um, call this function start game and for example in this function we can put i know we're creating a lot of functions but trust me they're important and this, in this function we can like reset for example the number of lives uh, and reset the position of the ball and stuff like that um, so ex actually we can take all of this stuff here i think and we can just uh, we, can, we can just copy it in, into this bam um right and then run not working why it's not working uh mode is not start obviously it's, it should be game game -oo. there we go okay so far so good so to reiterate we have a state machine inside our our update function and our draw function uh, that checks uh, for the variable mode which what is inside the variable mode and we put different types of text in there if there's a game in there you you execute the function we had previously where it's just playing the game when it start in, start in there it executes this function where we're checking for a button press and then when it's game over it's also doing something we are not using the game over yet so so that's something we're going to deal with right now. First of all, I want to create a variable called lives. And let's see, we have three lives at the beginning. That's, that's always a good number to start with. Um, let me see how I'm going to do this. Uh, first of all, probably I want to create like, um, mm, uh, like a display for the life so we know how many lives we have would be a pretty good idea I would say so let me do the following by the way somebody in a chat in a comment section said something interesting uh, they said that you can instead of the rect fill here that we do let me draw a huge rectangle over the entire screen to clear the screen you can go also CLS and then put a one in here the one is the color and it will clear the screen and fill it with a certain color color so that's nice i did not know that now i know this and i'm i'm gonna i'm eager to try this does it work it works pretty dope pretty dope good so i want to do a rect fill um so i'm gonna like the way we have this bar do you see this bar on the top here i like this bar I want to have a similar bar where I have a little bar where I display the number of lives, for example, and stuff like that. I want to have it on the top of my screen. On the top of my screen. Um, so the, the width gun is going to be 128 and the height. What's going to be the height? One, two, three, four, five, seven pixels is what I'm going for. The color I'm not exactly sure about yet the red i kind of like the red but it's kind of like very poppy um let, let me go with, with zero so it's going to be black and then i can print and then i'm going to print lives now i forgot to exp explain two things first of all how do you combine two pieces of text right let me just start out with just um, 
printing lives up there at 007. Just to see if we have a lives counter. We have a lives counter. There's a tiny little three up there. Uh, I think it shouldn't be a zero, zero, 001. It should be one, one, something like this. Let's try this again. Yeah, this, this looks a little bit better. Uh, you don't really see it in the stream because I have a black border around my thing, but I think I need a little bit of a, of a margin. Okay, so we have a, our life a life counter up up there. That's good. Maybe seven is too much. Maybe maybe you have to go to six. Let's try this. Yeah, six is fine. Okay. So now we want to not just have like a number there because the number nobody will understand what the number means. We want to actually write something there. So here's how this goes. Here's how you combine two variables into a string, into a piece of text. You type, you type lives and then dot dot and then something else. So, and actually I'm going to do a space here or maybe like a, like this. So now the, it's going to print the text of lives and then, um, how do you call it? Double point in Germany, it's double point, double point, um, colon, colon is colon. And then, uh, it, and then afterwards it, it adds the number of lives to it as a text. There you go. We have lives three up there now. Easy, easy. And we can, you know, put a score up there. We can put whatever we want up there. I like this. So another thing I wanted to explain to you, very important here. Uh, I forgot to mention this, and this is very important. Now you have to really, really listen because this is something that a lot of uh, people who learn programming get wrong. Uh, well, maybe not get wrong, but they make mistakes here a lot and they don't know how, why things are not working and they, you know, rip their hair out and then suddenly like, oh, you did that thing. And they go like, no, programming sucks. So here we're checking if the mode is, the variable mode is set to game. The operator to do like a comparison to see if something is set to a certain value is double equal sign, double equal sign. If you're comparing things, whenever you're doing something inside an if statement, that involves an equal sign is probably going to be in double equal sign unless there's maybe some other signs involved. So this is different from up here where we assign a value to, to another variable, right? Here we assign next y to um, the value that is next y to the variable ball y. We assign. Assigning is one equal sign. Assign. Comparing is double equal sign. Very important, important to remember this. Some programming languages like basic back in the days didn't do this. And I learned it wrong myself. And it was a huge source of frustration. It's always something that you that you just don't think about. I already even did it just now and just type in equals double equals for if statements. Remember this. Good. OK, so when I run this, oops. When I run this, I see a, a bit of a problem. Do you see the ball leaves the screen? It kind of hides behind the, our bar on the top there. I don't like that. I want the bar, the ball to stay on the playing field. So let me fix this real quick. We're just going to go to uh, update game. And then we're going to go to our collision detection is going to be somewhere here. Yeah, there we go. Um, so this is going to be Y, the Y collision detection. We're just going to go if it's smaller than, let's go seven. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, that's okay. So maybe let's tweak this a little bit. Let's go to an eight. And equally, we can go here to um, three, and we're gonna remove three from here, so it's gonna be four. I'm basically I want I want well, what I didn't want to do this. Oh yeah, I'm gonna starting the ball uh, on that spot. Let me fix this. Basically, I'm trying to. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. 
Um, I'm trying to make the ball um, not merge with the with the borders, not like run into the borders, but actually collide with with the with the borders pre more precisely. Seems okay. I think the top needs needs a bit more padding. Um, the top needs more padding. So let's go up to nine ten. Let's see how this works. Yeah, this seems fine and precise. So now the lo the ball no longer is drawn like halfway off the screen anymore. It's really just bouncing perfectly off the different different borders. Cool. Good. So now I want to have like a game over thing happen, right? I want to have the ball to um, when you it hits the lower edge of the screen, it should bounce, it should just disappear, and I should lose a life. Um, so here is where we checking for this. Uh, I'm going to edit this out. So we just bounce off the top of the screen. I mean, if it hits the bottom of the screen, then. So now uh, it comes the fun part. We need to have like a sound, maybe sound effect for, for bad things happening. Um, let me see. How are we going to, how does it sound? Oh, well, no. No, that's too soft. Hmm. How about we go a bit slower? Hmm. Even let, let me go a bit slower. Yeah, that sounds. That sounds like a. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I like this. So this is sound number two. SFX two. Um, lives equals lives minus one. Actually, we had like this shortcut here. We're going to use this minus equals one. So we remove one from lives. And then we have to serve the ball. So I'm going to call create a new function for this serve ball. So um, I checked Arcanoid and the way Arcanoid worked is when this ball is being served, it actually sticks to the paddle and then you press a button and then it flies away from the paddle. We might actually do that. Uh, but for now, we're just going to spawn the ball somewhere in space. But I like this, this, this gameplay mechanic. So here, up, up where we s um, start uh, the game, we're gonna go function serve ball. But that's that's something the serve ball thing comes comes later. For now, we're just gonna go. Um, I'm gonna set the position of the ball here. That's good, and the speed of the ball, and that's probably going to be it. That is going to be literally it. And then here, I can go. Serve ball. <laughs> okay, not what I expected. <laughs> what did happen? What happened? Oh, I know what happened. <laughs> That's an interesting problem. So what happened now is we do the update game function, right? And the update game function doesn't actually move the ball. It has like this this thing that it's uh, saved up. And the problem is, of course, here at the at the end we are at the end of the function we are resetting the position of the ball. So even if we reset the ball at the top of the screen, it continues the the function and then resets the ball uh, down here. So something we can do is we're gonna check for this after we move the ball. So this is the last thing we're going to do in this function. Let's try this now. That works. Perfect. 
perfect. Now, of course, we can lo we have infinite lives. We can go into negative lives. So I want to also check for for how many lives we have. If lives is smaller than zero, then and else we're gonna serve the ball. So if it's smaller than zero, we're gonna go game over. Simply game over. Game over, man. There is no function game over. We have to write the function for game over. I forgot. Right, so let's write the function game over. Mm. So first of all, let's when we are doing the update function, the draw function for game over, I'm gonna not clear the screen here. I'm just gonna leave the screen how it is because I wanna kind of show the screen that we had, the, the last screen that we that the player saw. So they can kind of see, for example, if they missed the ball, that they missed the ball. So I'm not gonna clear the screen, I'm gonna keep, uh, keep everything where it is. And here where we serve the ball, we're gonna go a function, function game over. And so at game over, we're gonna go, right now we're gonna go a very simple game over. We're just gonna go into mode equals game. Oh, game over, there we go. So we're gonna switch into game over and that's going to be it for now. So we, the game basically just freezes when we use all the lives. There we go. Now the game freezes, I cannot do anything anymore, we are game over. So now I want to draw something on the screen, uh, write the name game over on the screen. Where do we go? There we go. Let me see. Um, this uh, this is really just a little bit testing. Rect fill. Let's go rect fill. We create a rectangle. Uh, we're gonna make like a like a bar on the screen. Uh, that's like zero um, sixty four. Let's go with sixty. Um, it's one hundred twenty eight wide and is gonna be seven high. And it's going to be color zero. Then I'm going to print game over. Uh, and we're going to put this around 40 ish um, at the height of 61. And the color is going to be seven as well. Okay, let's try this. Oops. Streaming, streaming is having issues. Oh, this is not what we wanted. This is not what we expected. Why? Wh what is going wrong here? Oh, right. The second number. That's that's not the width. That's the second coordinate, right? So this is going to be 67. No, wait a minute. It's going to be 128 and 67. There we go. I forgot. That's good. That's pretty good. Um, let me go like 50 here. And let me go 68 and then 62 here. Just playing around with some numbers. I want to add some more padding and more regular padding to the to the bar that we created there. There we go. A bit too far to the right, I would say. So let's go 45. Mm. Not, not so sure, maybe six. So this is, you know, uh, later on we can maybe make a nice little um, animation there where you know, it pops up maybe perhaps, maybe like some kind of game over song, like, you know, da, 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 da. Um, but yeah, that's good.
I'm, I'm glad the way this looks. But actually, we don't just need game over. We also need to <laughs> we need to add a second line, which goes like press press x. Oops. Uh, where was x? There we go. Press x to so it's shift x, uh, shift x by the way. Is this x to restart? Um, so I am going to add more. Um, so this is going to be six plus. So I'm going to put it at fifty. Let's see how this works. No, no, actually, no. This this is good. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna keep it at this here, and then I'm gonna put it at sixty-seven. And of course, a rectangle has to be a little bit higher now. Sixty seventy-five. Let's try this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I think the press X has to be a bit lower. Um, so 68 and way more to the right. So at 30, let's try this. Uh, that's good. I want to have it more to the left. So 27, let's go 27, let's see how that looks. And then I also wanted to, maybe the rectangle has been not quite as high. Just, just you know, little perfectionism. It, that seems okay, it seems okay. Um, so the press X to restart, this is not going to be completely white. I'm going to put it at six. That's going to be a gray because it's less important than a game over, like in a hierarchy of things. I would Ideally, the game over would be a really nice big font, but we can't do that in Pico 8 unless we draw the game over. We're going to do this maybe at some point. Um, right. Right, I don't know why the height didn't work. The reduction of the height. Let's, let's try this again. Uh, yeah, I think this is good. I think this is good enough for now. So what I want to do now is uh, make it react when I press the X to restart. And we already have this code, so this is no problem. Mm back uh, over where we do the um, uh, the update um where where is it um there we go where we start the game well we're going to put the same thing in in update game over um, it's basically the same update function that we have in a start screen. Um, and uh, we do this, um, we're going to still make them two separate functions simply because sometimes, maybe at some time in the future, we're going to do something, some different things where we're going to start, uh, when you have this game over screen, perhaps some different things have to happen afterwards. Maybe there's another button to return to the main menu, or, or maybe you have to type in your, um, your initials for a high score or something. I don't know. It's, it's maybe a good, good idea to keep them separate. Zelfish asks, you can't center print. Seems like something that should be possible. You can center print. You, you can like create your own custom function that prints centered print, centered text. Um, it's actually not that difficult, but I feel like um, you, you can just, just as well do it manually. There's not too much text that we're going to print on the screen anyway. <laughs> And I could always reduce the number of lives to zero to get the game over screen more quicker. Right, but now it works. We restart and we're back at three lives. So now we have like a fully complete game loop going. That's exactly something, again, I've been talking about this last time around, but that's something that my students, when I give, uh, show the game to my students or I ask my students to make games, they often forget. They don't do that. Uh, or they kind of like put it off until the very last moment and then they don't have the time. So they never, it never gets implemented. 
And I feel like this is way more important than adding like some more gameplay features now because this is now becoming a game. We can actually play this game now. And there is a, there is a, there is a point to it. Speaking of points, one last thing we might add. I know this, this, this video is running a little bit long now, but I, one thing that we can add is we also can add points. So instead of, uh, uh, together with the lies, we're gonna add points. And then we start with zero. And then we can uh, draw, every time we hit the ball, we're gonna add one point, how about that? And then we already have a real game going. So let me first see, um, now you can see that pressing Alt and pressing up and down is really good because you can quickly jump between the different functions, really nice. So here where we print the lives, we're gonna go like score and um, go like points. Um, and then the X coordinate's gonna be like 40, let's try 40. Yeah, there we go. We're not changing the score yet though. So let's fix this. So when we hit the pedal, we're gonna add one to points. There we go. Points plus equals one. This is the collision detection thing we did previously. And there we go. Perfect, it's working. Okay, this was a bit of a longer episode, but we didn't do too much complicated stuff. So on the next episode, we are going to deal with the blocks because it's breakout and breakout is about cr breaking through blocks. So we're gonna draw some blocks on the screens to get add more gameplay elements as well. So I hope you join me next time around. If you have any questions, post them in the, in the YouTube comment sections. I'm gonna try to answer them. If you have any suggestions or requests what you wanna do in this game, let me also know, maybe I, I can accommodate them. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye. Safe.